Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting video where I played for 100 days in Medieval Minecraft. Medieval Minecraft is a mod pack full of magical mobs, endless quests, and lots of dungeons and bosses. My goal is to see how much I can accomplish in 100 days inside of this modded world. This video took me a very very long time to finish, so be sure to like and subscribe, go ahead and grab a snack, get cozy, and let's jump right in. On day one, I spawned inside of a snowy hemlock forest. In this mod pack, you do already get a little bit of food, a sword, armor, a bow, and some torches to start out with, but I needed to find a bed and get the rest of my starter tools and find some water as there is a thirst system within the mod pack. So water is one thing that I'm constantly going to have to be worrying about. So off I went to find the perfect tree to chop down and then gathered some stone for my very first set of stone tools. Of course, this mod pack has plenty of fun critters. So I found a little sporling. Look at the sporling, it's so cute. I love him, what do you do? You just stand around and look cute? And this weird lizard thing. I'm sorry, but what is that? I don't think he's friendly. I could be wrong, but I do not think he is friendly. <gasps> we got him. He didn't really drop anything, unfortunately. After that, I found a spruce tree, so I gathered some saplings for future use. Then I started to get cold. That's another thing that I'll have to worry about, making sure that I don't get too hot or too cold. For some reason, I decided to ignore this problem because ignoring your problems always makes them go away, right? So instead, I found some dragons. Oh my goodness, we have some dragons. How cute. I'm not really sure what they do, but they are very medieval, aren't they? And then I finally found something that could be of use to me. Oh, I think we have ourselves a village. This is exactly what we needed. I did a little loot and then went to sleep for the very first time. The next day, I would immediately be faced with the reason why we shouldn't put off our problems until later. Okay, well, we are freezing to death. I don't know why, but I just, I wasn't really concerned about it, but maybe I should have been. Okay, um, let me set my spawn real fast. I don't want to die. So I basically waited for the sweet embrace of death. Anyways, so that never happens again, I decided that I would set off in the search of something a little warmer. During my journey, I was able to find a small cave with a bit of iron, coal, and copper, but I wasn't really having much luck finding anything warm. I'm not really finding anything of interest over here, just a lot of snow and then one small warm biome. So I think that I'm going to try to do some ice boating and hopefully we can find something a little bit better. And ice boating did prove to be a lot more successful, though I do want to find that perfect place to base. So I took a little sleep and continued on the next day. While I was minding my business exploring a forest, I stumbled upon these things. Honestly, I don't even know what they were. I'll let the clips explain themselves. Oh, I don't think those are nice. I do not think those are nice. Are they coming for me? I mean, it didn't hurt that bad. Oh, and there's another mushroom boy. He's so cute. Though, are we really in the position to take this on? Probably not. Oh, you fly. Can you not bear shield, please? Oh, we got him. Hello. Inquisitor? You don't seem that scary, right? What is this? Oh my goodness, a rotting corpse? I hate that. Is this a doorway? Of s is this like a portal? <gasps> um, I don't think that we should be here. Yep, I don't think we should be here. Let's go ahead and leave. With that fun little adventure out of the way, I ended up finding the perfect place to base. Maybe I'm lame for wanting to base in a regular forest, but look how beautiful this forest is. Why wouldn't I want to base here? Oh my goodness, and look, we have a magical tree right here. Obviously, this is the place. Observe the wise oak. Okay, this is the place that we're going to stay. We have some mushrooms, plenty of fresh water, that creepy tree over there, 
and a portal to a new dimension right over that way. A nice tropical beach with some cute sea stars. And a super spooky ocean monument or something. And a bee. Yep, this is home. So I placed out my crafting table, my bed, a furnace, and dumped a bunch of stuff inside of a chest. Now that we have a small place to call home, it was time to start figuring out a permanent solution to our drinking water. So if you go into the quest book that comes with the mod pack, there's one specifically for the dehydration mod, and it kind of walks you through how to make and store fresh drinking water. The first step was to make a copper cauldron to hold clean water in that I could then use to fill up a water flask. So I smelted a bit of copper up. While that was cooking, I crafted a campfire that I could eventually use to purify water. And then I got a bit distracted and paused on my water journey to chop some wood. I literally cannot tell you why I decided to do this honestly. I just got a little bit distracted. On the next day, I got the flask from the quest book and drank water for the very first time. But I still needed to craft a specific kind of cauldron for purifying the water. So I plan on going on a little caving trip to get more iron and other caving goodies. We have ourselves a little cave goblin and these guys are actually pretty cool because we can trade him all of our raw iron and get double the smelted raw iron. So now we have 16. That's actually really good. Oh, and I think that's an abandoned mine shaft. That's so cool. I don't think I'm ready to explore it quite yet, but I do think I see a little chest. So maybe we could do a little open. Ooh, a skillet. Beetroot seeds, pumpkin seeds, melon seeds. We'll definitely have to explore that at some point soon. But I do have plenty of iron now, so I think I want to head back up to my base. <gasps> Wait, there's diamond right here. Okay, first we had to make ourselves an iron pickaxe. I definitely never went to that mine shaft again. But while prepping to craft a pickaxe, I ran into a little friend. <gasps> Oh my goodness, what is that? What is that? Oh my gosh. That was awful. That was absolutely terrifying. Okay, I'm really, really ready to leave now. But there's no going home yet. There are diamonds to mine. And then a minor moon appeared, which gave me the haste effect. And obviously I had to continue mining for goodies. And then I towered up to the surface. Now back at home, I had the materials needed to craft the campfire cauldron. With this, I can put normal buckets of water in it and it'll purify over the fire. So now I had an easy way of getting clean water and I could start working on other things. And the next step was building myself a house. So I started off with collecting some oak wood and then getting distracted immediately after and planting some wheat and rice. After living my best farmer life, I planted some birch, oak and spruce saplings as this is what I planned on building my house out of. Before bed, I checked out some of my quests and got some rewards for progressing in the dehydration mod. And now we have bamboo, which will come in handy in the future. The next morning, I planned on collecting some more materials for my house. But before I started, I found something in the woods. So I stumbled upon this chest and it comes from the mod probably chests. So I'm a little bit worried, but obviously we have to open it up. And it seems like we have a name tag, carrots. That's actually a really good find. Some sweet berries, iron nuggets, rabbit hide, ender pearls, wheat seeds, redstone dust. And it doesn't seem to want to eat me. So that's a good sign. For the rest of the day, I just collected a bunch of wood. I really didn't want to have to stop in the middle of my building to collect more materials. So I tried to collect as much as I could in one go. I pretty much did the same thing on day seven as well, though I did find some potatoes, which I was very happy about. <gasps> I found potatoes. I love potatoes. I will definitely be planting these back at home. Also, look at that massive birch tree. It is so tall. And I collected some gravel for coarse dirt. 
The last thing I needed to collect for my house was a bunch of cobblestone and some sand for windows. Now with all of the materials gathered, I started to clear out a bit of land for the build. I wanted this house to be very medieval inspired since this is medieval Minecraft after all. So I started with a cobblestone base and this will eventually have a second story built out of wood. The house is going to have this little section coming off of the main part of it where I can keep animals in in the future as soon as I have some. And oh look, some spawned right here in front of me. Oh my gosh, that literally scared me so bad. I don't know why I pause every single time I get scared, but I just do. Okay, this is the wandering trader and he looks a little bit spooky and he also makes very spooky noises. And it doesn't really seem like he has too much to trade, though this is kind of cool. But in order to get it, I need a diamond sword and 45 emeralds, which is something that I do not have. Do we even have any emeralds? Okay, we have six. So we very well could buy a bundle if we wanted to, which is just a little bit tempting. I do think that I'm going to pass on the bundle though and just get some leads instead. So clearly I won't be keeping the llamas inside of the pen, but from there I built up the walls some more and added this trim that I feel like you see on a lot of medieval builds. And then I just hunkered down and built for the next several days. The second story is built out of birch with some stripped oak logs on the corners. I really like the birch texture in this mod pack. It feels a lot more cohesive with the other wood types as opposed to the vanilla version in my opinion. I carved out some spaces for windows and then got to work on the space above the animal pen. I decided to do a little slanted roof that connects to the main part of the house and that brings us on to the main roof. I wanted the center of it to peek over the windows on the top floor though I realized that I built the walls a little too short. So I went ahead and raised them up one block and got started on the roof once again. To fill in the roof, I used spruce and then to break it up a little bit, I added these stripes of oak planks. On the corners of the build, I placed some fences and then added a roof to the little entrance. On day 12, I had most of the house built, but needed to do a lot of detailing. So I placed the front door, all of the windows, and some shutters and flower boxes. On the wall opposite of the animal pen, I added a little balcony just to break things up a little. And also I will be able to safely observe all of the monsters trying to kill me at night. Of course I had to add a chimney and with that the exterior is nearly finished. Now to add some flowers to the flower boxes. So I went on a little flower picking adventure and stumbled upon a blueberry patch. I just found this adorable blueberry patch. Right now I'm looking for flowers to put in my little window boxes on my house, but I just couldn't pass up this cute little blueberry patch. Oh, and it's raining. I think this is the very first time. Oh wait, we have some coconut crabs over here. Hello, coconut crabs but it's raining and I think this is our very first rain of the world. Oh, and look at the house from here. It's looking so good. With blueberries in hand, I just went around looking for pretty flowers to pick. And then filled the flower boxes. I still needed just a few more flowers on day 14, so I went deeper into the forest and stumbled upon a graveyard. Disturbing the dead too. Enter a large graveyard. Interesting. Is there anything underneath these? It doesn't look like it. Just a little bit of soul soil. Oh wait, it's massive. There's even more. So much of it. Oh, we have ourselves a pillager. 
I was literally out here looking for flowers and there's this really pretty part of the graveyard with so many different kinds of flowers. Oh, and a wither rose. There are some pillagers here and there and I'm not exactly sure where they're coming from. Oh, I think this is like a pillager outpost or something. Maybe it's kind of combined with the graveyard. It looks like here we have some kind of mausoleum or something. And it has a door. So I'm going to break in and see what's inside. Ooh, spooky. It honestly doesn't seem like much. Oh, there's a spawner. Maybe should break that. I'm just really not interested in spawners. Oh, and there's this urn. We got a wither skeleton skull. Super neat. Let me just sleep in the graveyard real fast. Which brings us to day 15. Well, we were able to get lots of goodies from the graveyard, especially flowers. So I think that I'm going to go ahead and continue with the house. With the final flowers placed, the exterior of the house is finally complete. Now time to start working on the interior. So I began by replacing the grass with a bit of wood and then figuring out how I wanted to place the rooms. I intend on this house to be the main structure of my base and not to have to build much else as I want to focus a lot more on adventuring and exploring than building. I did end up running out of cobblestone though unfortunately so i had to gather more to add a floor to the second level the balcony was a bit awkward to get to since it was much higher than the second floor so i added this little staircase to get to it i admit that i did not plan this out in the slightest when putting the balcony in but i still think it works I did a little polishing of the ceiling and got to building level two, whatever that means. I still never figured out what these skills are or where to find them. What even just happened? I guess I'm now sitting on the stairs. So note to self, you can go through the ceiling if you need to. Interesting, I was not expecting that to happen. I added an extra room downstairs that will eventually be my storage room. And on day 17, I pretty much just organized my storage all day and did some minimal interior. I don't really plan on decorating too much at the moment. I really just wanted a safe place to sleep smelt things, and store my items before I try to progress further in the game. The last thing that I had to do to finish up my house was to finish organizing my storage, and as soon as that was done, my house was officially complete. On day 18, the house is pretty much complete. We still have a lot of interior work to do, but I think I will get to that a little bit later. I kind of want to move on to some other things, but just a quick little tour. Over here, we have this little animal pen, I'm thinking. Maybe we can put some cows in here or maybe some horses or something. And then of course, we have lots of little window flower boxes showcasing a lot of the flowers that we got over in that graveyard and I think they just add such a cute touch to this medieval house. Moving on to the interior, like I said, I really have a lot more work to do in here, but I imagine that this is going to be a little kitchen area once we're able to get some counters. Over here in this room, we just have a mini storage area and then upstairs we have our bedroom which literally just has our bed and we do have access to a little balcony over here. Something that is super cool that you can do in medieval Minecraft is actually level up your character, which is so much fun. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Basically, you just translate your levels down here into different skills that make you stronger, make you faster, make you break blocks faster, and lots of other cool things, even make you have more health. So I want to be a little bit stronger, so let's go ahead and level up strength. Intelligence will give me more experience, so I think I'm going to level up this just a little bit. And luck is always a good thing, so maybe let's level up that as well. Pretty much, I think I'm just going to level up everything a little bit, maybe strength a little bit more. Now that I had a house and had leveled up a little bit, I really wanted to focus on getting stronger and progressing so that I was able to do some more really cool medieval-esque things. So I started prepping for another caving trip, mostly looking for diamonds, iron, and any other resources that I could find. I stumbled upon this giant cave that looked pretty promising and found some diamonds. Oh, I already found diamonds. So cool. Moonstone, gold, a revenant. Oh, it's one of those things again. I hate them so much. They're so scary. And an evil <gasps> bat thing. Oh my god. 
What are you? Honestly, caving in medieval Minecraft is truly terrifying. Gosh, I literally hate these so much! Oh, I love you! Trade with me, please, Gwyneth, and double all of my iron. I literally love him so much. With my pockets full of caving goodies, I headed to the surface only to get greeted by more monsters. Oh, look at these guys. They're huge! Monster free, I emptied out my inventory and got the itch to do a bit of exploring. I hadn't really explored much yet and wanted to see what was out there. Maybe find a cow or two, maybe score some good loot along the way. The first thing that I found was this really cool underwater village, though it proved to not be that cool after all. <gasps> ah, it's a village of drone. Okay, I get it, I get it. For some reason, I just thought it was a friendly village of like mermaids or something, but no, it's a village of drowned. Which really does make a lot of sense because why would there be mermaids? Obviously, this is a drowned village. Well, that's still cool nonetheless, but I am not ready. Oh my gosh, wait! A mushroom island! That's so cool! I don't even know what I was saying, but it's obviously not as important as this mushroom island. And what are you? Why are you here? You know, maybe he's not a bad guy because there aren't supposed to be bad guys here. I don't think he is a bad guy. So that one that we killed, we just killed for funsies, I guess. I'm just over here exploring, trying to find some cows and honestly just exploring and having fun and just looking at all of the things that medieval Minecraft has to offer and stumbled upon this. That's a really cool find. Though, you know, it won't be cool if I can't find any mushrooms. Also, this mycelium is so ugly. There's a snail, but no mushrooms on this entire island. How sad is that? I did some more exploring and found a wee single dad. He has a baby! Look, this little fisher out here in the middle of nowhere has a baby that's actually so cute. And here I am literally stealing all of his stuff. I didn't really find that many more cool things on this trip and honestly kind of just wasted a bunch of time, though I did find some cow friends to take home with me. Oh my goodness, look at all these cows, cream cows. Okay, we are definitely taking these home with us. So I journeyed home with our two new cows. Oh, sorry cows. I'm sorry, are you well? Not really, honestly. I'm so sorry. And bred them up. I also remembered that I had an extra room in the house that I had yet to utilize. Oh my gosh, do you know what I just noticed? I have a separate room in here that I literally forgot about. I did nothing with it. Well, that's kind of neat. We'll definitely have to make that into a functional room. I spent the rest of the day researching the quest book and this particular mod called Miriam's Souls-like Weaponry piqued my interest. It looked like there were a bunch of new weapons and bosses and I decided that I want to focus on this particular mod a bit throughout the 100 days. There are so many mods in this mod pack and there's just no way that I'm going to be able to try them all out, so I really just wanted to focus on a handful. Within the Souls-like mod, there is this Moonstone Greatsword that I was actually able to craft, but I figured out that I needed to power it with some kind of evil spirit that I obviously didn't have yet. But don't you worry, we will acquire one in the future. In the meantime, I continued breeding up the cows and planting more sugarcane for an enchantment setup. On day 24, I wanted to make steps to go to the nether, so I crafted a diamond pickaxe to be able to collect obsidian to make a nether portal. In the Miriam's mod that I talked about earlier, you can smelt soul sand to obtain lost souls that you can then use to summon a boss and make armor with. Hence why I wanted to go to the nether. Once I had collected all of the obsidian I needed, I wanted to test out my new sword, so found some monsters to fight. And it was decent, a little better than a diamond sword, but I know it'll be much stronger once I'm able to power it up. On the next day, it was time to go into the nether, so I built the nether portal, 
crafted a golden helmet, lit the portal, and then jumped on in. I spawned really close to a nether fortress, which is nice, but it was really hard to travel anywhere as I was pretty high up and surrounded by a lava ocean. There was this neat looking village thing, though I unfortunately never got a chance to explore it. I did try exploring the fortress a little bit to see if I could get any further in the nether, but the wither skeletons were just so strong and I wasn't feeling up to dying just yet. Also remember that I was looking for soul sand and only soul sand during this trip. Oh my goodness, level 54, look how much HP he has. Why does he have so much HP? Why is he so strong? Feeling a little bit discouraged, I went back home to try to see about making another nether portal to maybe get a better spawn. Before that though, I upgraded my water flask to gold so that I could hold even more water than before and gathered some more obsidian. Then I ventured off a little bit and found a ruined portal and just decided to restore it and see where it spawned me. I guess I didn't really go that far though because it spawned me in the same exact location as before. So I broke it and then went to go find a new location to build another portal. While venturing off, I found this tower thing that had a mana leech spawner at the top and lots of bookshelves, which means that I don't have to grind for an enchantment setup anymore. Exploring a little more led me to this little house in the snow. <gasps> okay. We found ourselves a little isolager and he doesn't seem to be very nice. Ah, I really don't want to die. We'll just set our spawn here. Oh, I almost got him. Oh, I'm so close. Oh, I just popped my little like heart totem thing. Okay, I think that I can get him though. I'm pretty sure that he's so close to dying. Just die. Just die. Okay, we got him. I was here. I lived. I... Oh, I'm still getting hurt. Oh my goodness. We did it. We did it, little piggy. Oh, and look at his cute little house. He has eyes. Oh, a bundle. You love to see it. It's kind of cozy in here, isn't it? Wait, he has goats. That's so cute. Oh my goodness, I love it here. You get that little charm totem thing right when you spawn into a world, by the way. But with the Isolager defeated, I decided to place another portal right by his house. This time, I did spawn a little closer to the ground, but I was nearly inside of the fortress. Though I did want to try to make this work, so I staircased down until I found a way to get close to the lava ocean and then get soul sand. Finally, I found soul sand. I didn't even notice this, but we got a totem of freezing from the Isolager. That is so neat. Unfortunately, being so close to the lava ocean, I did start to overheat a little bit, so I had to cut the trip short and return home, but I was still able to get about a stack and a half of soul sand. And yeah, my shovel did break too, let's not talk about it. Once I was out of the nether, I headed back home and spotted the cutest turtle along the way. I think the river turtle has to be the cutest mob I've seen so far in this mod pack. Look at him just going, he's just swimming, it's so cute. Back at home, I smelted up the soul sand, did a bit of leveling up while I waited, and then crafted some leggings and a helmet with the new soul-infused iron ingots. And now I'm looking pretty snazzy. In my journey of getting stronger, I wanted to explore the magic system in this mod pack, so I did some researching in the quest book. Time does pass while reading the quest book, by the way, so I tried to do it at nighttime so that I wasn't wasting precious daylight. The magic system was a bit confusing, but I decided the first thing I wanted to do was to craft a rune crafting altar which as the name suggests, allows you to craft runes. I got an enchanted book from completing the quest and then went about finding out how to craft these runes. What did the runes do? I honestly had no idea at this point. To craft them, you pretty much just needed to combine cobblestone with a corresponding material. I decided to craft a healing rune first because I thought it would be super useful to be able to heal myself in battle only to find out later that they actually don't work at all. 
Or maybe they do, but I just don't know how to get them to work. Next, I crafted an arcane rune and then a novice wand. So this is kind of how this works to my understanding. In order to use the rune, you have to use a specific wand that goes with that kind of rune. For example, if you want to use an arcane rune, you have to craft an arcane wand. And the same thing for the fire and freeze runes. Oh yeah, and then I realized that I forgot my bed over at the Isologer's house, so I had to run all the way there and get it. On day 30, I felt like I had finally leveled up enough to be able to explore that spooky portal we found right in the beginning. I was ready for a little adventure and I wanted to test out my new wands that I made. I am ready to explore the prisoners quarters. I think that we are a little bit more prepared than we were last time when we gave this a peek. We have our little wands here and there's a giant sword. So let's go on in and maybe we can take it on. So very first I want to try out this. Oh, what does it do? Are you evil? Oh, I do think he's evil. Oh, is this hurting him? I don't really know. I don't think it is. What about the fire? Does that hurt him? I don't think the fire hurts him either. Okay, then what is this for? I am using my runes. Either I'm doing it wrong or it has no effect on him. I don't know. I guess we'll just use this instead. So yes, I did all of that work for nothing. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it's broken. Honestly, I'm not really sure. But anyways, moving on to the dungeon. And that's one bad guy dealt with. This is so neat in here. What is this box? Evil box? Yes, evil box. Okay, but I don't think he hurts that bad, right? No, we're good. We got this. Piece of cake. Honestly, this is such a vibe. I love this. It seems like there's different levels that we are going to have to walk into and then deal with another bad guy, maybe. So it's not that overwhelming. I feel like a lot of things within Minecraft mod packs can be so overwhelming because you have so many mobs to deal with. And this is just kind of like us dealing with one at a time. And so far the loot hasn't been great, but maybe we'll find something cool. Ooh, look at this enchanted book. Oh my goodness, and diamonds. So I continue to explore the dungeon, taking out the bad guys with ease and looting all of the chests. I know I said the loot wasn't great, but it actually was pretty good. I got so much iron, emerald, enchanted books, and even diamonds from this place. After exploring the first level, I found this hole that brought me even lower into the dungeon and it was pretty much the same as the first level just more monsters and loot this broadsword has 17 attack damage there has to be a downside right because that's so good i'm gonna give it a go right now I mean, it got him in three hits. That looks pretty good to me. After exploring and looting for a while, my armor did start to break and my inventory was getting really full. So I headed back to my base to drop things off and craft new armor. Since we found so many diamonds, I decided to craft our very first diamond armor. Look how schnazzy we are looking. Oh my gosh, I disappeared. Then I went straight back through the portal and found this vine thing that I missed before. Oh, look at this one plant. Runic vine plant. It's unbreakable and it's like moving. That will come in handy later, but for now I continued going through the dungeon until I found a third level that was about the same as the levels before. This is where I stumbled upon another portal. Oh... Here's something different. Promenade of the Condemned. That seems pretty spooky. Are we ready for it? I have no idea. Though I'm not done exploring this level, so I'm going to keep on doing that and then maybe we'll check that out. I mean, so far I've been doing kind of okay here, so maybe we're ready. Once I had finished exploring the rest of the third level, I jumped on into the portal to see where it would take me. I did want to mention that this mod that I'm exploring right now is heavily inspired by the real game dead cells which i'm sure some of you all have noticed if you've played that game before i had never played it so i had no idea so all of this content that you see is inspired by another game but anyways moving on oh but there are these little guys <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh no i think he's probably a little bit stronger than the other ones that we have dealt with i would say 
okay maybe he's not that strong i don't know honestly this mod is so cool like the atmosphere it's so good i hear bad guys everywhere wait they're ah they're everywhere oh bats mutant bats I found this chest hanging in the middle of a pit of spikes, so I breached on over and opened up the chest. There was this orb of regret, which refunds all skill points, so that's cool I guess, though I never did use one of these. Basically, I did a bunch of running around, entering these buildings, killing bad guys, and finding loot. It was kind of like the dungeon, but organized in a different way with slightly stronger bad guys. Things were going pretty well until this runner guy appeared out of nowhere and... Ah! Oh my gosh, he hurts so bad! Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh, I can't believe I died! What do you mean? So I think that those protector things give the bad guys resistance and strength, so that's how he was able to two-shot me. And also, they are just kind of tough. But I entered the dimension again and tried to get my stuff back. How did I even get in this dang place? Oh no! Ah! And then entered a third time. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Oh my goodness, I got everything. Oh my gosh, thank goodness. Last chest and then I'm going home, honestly. And it literally has leaves, just leaves. All right, I am ready to get out of here. Um, that was fun while it lasted, though I think I would like to prepare just a little bit more, you know. Returning home, I wanted to switch things up and take a break from adventuring for a bit. But don't worry, we'll be back soon. First to build an enchantment setup. I wanted to place it upstairs as I had plenty of room up there. So I decided to make that space above the cow pen my bedroom. I did leave my bed over at the prison portal so I took a little forest nap. And then I woke up on day 35 and got busy with the enchantment setup. I tore down my nether portal to get obsidian. I didn't like the nether spawn anyways. And then I went over to that one magic tower that I found several days ago with all of the bookshelves. While I was already away from home, I wanted to look around and try to find some sheep that I could use to make a sleeping bag and a backpack. I don't know how I made it 36 days in without a sheep. But somehow I did, and I had to go a few more days without sheep because I had no luck finding any. Though I did find some cute hermit crabs. Oh my goodness, and look at these little hermit crabs. They're so cute. There's another one over here. And then there's one here that has like an enchanted shell. Oh my goodness. Little fancy hermit crab. They're so cute. And a village that I scored an anvil and a grindstone from. Back at home with my bookshelves and no sheep, I crafted an enchanting table the bookshelves, and got to building the setup. It's really nothing fancy, but I really liked how I had everything that I could ever want right here inside of my starter house. And also you can place books, so obviously I had to place them everywhere. Finally, I put my bed in my new bedroom and went to sleep. Honestly, my little house reminds me of Animal Crossing or something with being able to decorate my little rooms and it just really makes me happy. My next step for getting stronger and being able to take on the promenade was crafting a bow and there are literally so many bows in this mod pack. It was really hard to decide what I should craft honestly and I'm not sure if all of the bows even have that much different about them other than aesthetics. Anyways, I went with a love spell bow that had little hearts on it, and then I ransacked my enchanted books chest and put affinity, bonus shot, and power three on my new bow. Some nights I definitely stayed up a little bit just so that I could get the most out of my 100 days. So this night I did some minimal decorating. And also leveled up my dexterity one. On day 39, I was determined to get a sheep. 
it was a crime that I didn't have any sheep by now. So I went out adventuring and found this stunning meadow that voiceover me doesn't look at the same anymore now that I'm done with the 100 days. You'll find out why later though. But I did find sheep here and they were cute little horned sheep too. I made it back home with these little cuties and then set out to build them a pen. I wanted it to fit in with a medieval vibe so I went with a stone enclosure with some fences mixed in. Once the pen was finished, it was time to add the sheep. So I smacked them out of the boat, though luckily I didn't kill them. Can you imagine me going through all of that just for me to ax them to death? I did a little breed and then sheared them and started to make a path and texture the inside of the pen when tragedy struck. Oh my goodness, a sheep died on the campfire. I mean, like I was definitely planning on moving the campfire. I just didn't know where to put it yet, but I didn't think a sheep would die on it. Wait, how many sheep do we have? Okay, we have two. So I guess the baby died or something. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of this now before anything else bad happens because also the sheep is about to die. Rest in peace, sheep. You will be missed. Clearly, that was a sign for me to move the campfire. So I put it in a much better spot and decorated around it so it wasn't just a random campfire sitting in a forest. I placed some little sitting logs around and textured the ground and I think it turned out pretty cute. After a wholesome moment of planting flowers, it was about time that I harvested the cows. It looks so much worse with this mod's combat system. The last thing that I really needed to do to finish sprucing up my face was to plant some crop fields close by. I started with a wheat one and then finished with a potato one. The last thing to do was to add a well and then my base upgrades were finished for now. Moving on to my mission to get stronger, I wanted to craft a backpack. The backpack in this mod allows you to carry water, holds a sleeping bag, has a crafting table, and of course gives you more inventory space. First, I crafted the sleeping bag and of course made it pink, crafted the tanks that hold the water, and then crafted the backpack. This will come very much in handy whenever adventuring. Next, it was time to upgrade from iron armor and craft full diamond armor. I raided my enchanted book chest once again and put protection four on my chest plate, protection three on my leggings, bag of souls two on my chest plate, which I think gives you more experience or something, respiration three on my helmet, and feather falling three on my boots. Also, look how goofy I look in my diamond armor. Why is it so big? Look at the helmet, it's so big. With all of this good enchanted armor, I knew I really needed some kind of unbreaking or mending. And since I got a bunch of emeralds from the prison, I decided that a good route to do that would be to buy books from villagers. And so I set off to visit that village I found earlier and roll for some trades. Though, when I tried to break the lectern, I accidentally hit a villager, and the villager attacked me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. I really apologize. Okay. Okay. He's strong. Okay, let's go. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, why are you so strong? Rest in peace, villager. You will be missed. Back at the village, though, I was having a hard time getting any of the villagers to accept a job. If I did get them to accept the job, once I went to re-roll it, they just wandered off somewhere and never came back. Could I have found a better way to do this? Yes, but I decided to go look for another village. It all ended up working out in the end, but my logic here didn't really make sense in hindsight. While exploring for that other village, I found this one little cabin that was kind of like the Isolager house, except this one had an illusioner. The 
house is pretty cozy on the inside, but I did notice that there was what looked like a villager on the map. So I started breaking the carpet to see if there was a secret way down. Oh my goodness, they have a villager trapped. How sad. Hello, Harriet. Do you know what you're going to do? You're going to be my new librarian. See what I mean? It all ended up working out perfectly in the end. And so I began the journey of rolling for trades specifically looking for mending and unbreaking three. I did get a mending trade on the first day of rolling, but I passed it out because it was 20 emeralds, 25 because I accidentally hit the villager. <gasps> I'm so sorry, I, I pressed the wrong button. I'm really sorry. I will go on to regret that decision because it took me a whole six days to get another mending offer. On day 48, I did get a little scare. I'm sorry, but where did the villager go? Where did he go? Did he go up? Oh my goodness. Harriet, what are you doing? Grew a beard, got old? So I guess villagers can go up ladders. I had no idea, but apparently Harriet can. I also did break my ax while rolling for trades and spent about a day hand mining the lectern, which was just awful. And I wasn't about to spend another day doing that. So I went out to chop a tree and I made a wooden ax. I got an unbreaking three trade offer, but I mostly decided that I just wanted mending so that I could keep the same armor and weapons throughout the whole world. That's one thing that I've learned about playing for only 100 days. Typically in a Minecraft world, I'll focus on getting an experience farm and full diamond armor and then fully enchanting it, but that takes a lot of time and I only had 100 days. I didn't want to spend those 100 days just grinding, I wanted to adventure and fight cool things. So yes, some of the things that I do may seem out of order and a little bit inefficient, but it's just how I decided to approach the only days that I would spend in this world. Anyways, on day 49, there was a thunderstorm that made this guy spawn. What is that? Oh my goodness, that looks terrifying. So I set my spawn and then decided to fight him because why not? I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Oh, okay, summoner. The summoner pretty much summons, hence the name, small hordes of monsters, but he himself doesn't attack you. Honestly, it was pretty easy. Defeat a summoner. Oh, I got a book. I mean, it's fine. It's not that great. We have fortune two, which is cool, but maybe he was hoping for something a little bit better. Now we can go ahead and check this off of our list. Kill one summoner. And that brings us to day 50, AKA the day I finally got another mending offer. Oh my gosh, mending for 20 emeralds. Okay, I will take it. I will take all of them. Also note that's literally the same amount of emeralds that the first offer was. Buddy, that took literally way too long. I can't believe you did that to me. So I started the long journey back home and found out about rolling. Oh, so pressing this button makes you roll. I knew that it made me go fast, but I didn't know I was actually rolling. That looks so goofy. I think this could be pretty useful in combat, actually. So maybe I'll keep this in mind and then I can roll away from enemies when I need to. Yeah, I definitely never use that again. Back at home, I put mending on my chest plate, helmet, and boots and did the typical post-adventure things like putting away my items and breeding up my animals. The next day, I wanted to try to heal up my armor now that I had mending on it and remembered encountering some pillagers back at the graveyard. So I went to check that out. I was thinking maybe it was a pillager village, but it was actually just an outpost. Though they gave me plenty of experience to heal my armor. I went inside to scope it out and see what I could find and found this acrobat four book and a corrupted eye. 
Ooh, the beginning of an adventure. What does that mean? Get your first eye. That was pretty much it to the outpost and I'll use the eye thing tomorrow, you'll see. First, I wanted to craft some more water flasks so that I could have plenty of water with me on adventures. One flask was just not enough. I know I haven't really talked much about the water thing lately, but it was actually pretty annoying. It was a constant worry for me throughout this entire playthrough of whether or not I would have enough water and then also having to purify my water and fill up my flasks. That alone took up a small chunk of every day. Before I went to sleep for the night, I went out onto my balcony like I do just to look around and see if there were any spooky monsters and I did end up finding something. Oh my goodness, what is that? Is it a dragon? I kinda wanna find out. What if we just take a little peek? Hello dragon thing, are you friendly? Oh my gosh, giant Yektoia. Can I ride you? Oh my gosh, I can? Oh, skeleton creeper, no! Okay. I'm sorry, giant Yektoia. Oh my gosh, best friends forever. And you can just, oh, what? This is so cool. You can just ride a saddle. I have, oh wait, do you sink? Okay, you can't swim, got that, but you don't sink. So that's a good sign. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Ah! Oh, I don't like you. Why are you so fast? You know, maybe I should sleep. Yeah, let's go to sleep. After going to sleep, I wanted to see what this corrupted eye was about. And I guess it was kind of like an eye of ender. So I decided to throw it. What did I do? What did I do? Where did it go? Well, I just used that corrupted eye and then completely lost track of it. I have no idea where it went. I think it went down. Um, so that kind of sucks, but we have this giant gecko, so that's pretty cool, right? Yep, so I totally wasted it. Who knows what it does? I don't, because I threw it away. Anyways, today was the day to finally go back to the promenade from earlier. So I think that I want to go back to that place that I died earlier, and it looks like we can find a vine rune and then we can use it on that weird moving plant that we saw earlier in the prison and then i think that like a big boss will come out or something so the goal is to find the vine rune and to find that i had to find an elevator to take me down into another dungeon finding that elevator took me so so long i just ran around looting and fighting bad guys for days i got lots of goodies and lots of experience so i'm not complaining necessarily though it did get kind of boring after a while though i did find this really cool sword back in the prison and a chest that i had missed and i think it's my favorite sword that i got the whole time that i was playing in this 100 days it's just so much faster than my other sword oh and getting mending was a great idea for this place in particular Though on day 55, my leggings were looking pretty rough, so I decided to go back home to get another mending book with all of my new emeralds. Back at home after a long night's rest, I went out to fill up my water like I always do in the morning and got attacked by this dog thing. Oh, what is that? Oh my goodness. Hello? Oh my, literally what is going on? Can we all just calm down for a second, please? Okay. Well, luckily my giant gecko is okay. Everything is well in the world. Nothing like waking up to utter chaos. But back to the task at hand, our lovely mending villager Harriet lives pretty far away from us. So I wanted to make an easy way to teleport to and from her house. So I crafted us each a waystone. I love the fact that Harriet is free now and lives in her own cute house. It warms my heart. I was going to take my giant gecko to Harriet's house. All right, gecko, let's go. But I decided against it. You know, this might be a terrible idea. Actually, gecko, I'm so sorry, but we're not gonna go. I just feel like he's going to get stuck on every single tree. So just boat it instead. Harriet, what are you doing? You absolute menace. At her house, I placed on the waystone and absolutely butchered the spelling of her name, sorry Harriet, and traded for two mending books. Now my leggings and sword both have mending. While playing around with some enchanting, I kept on hearing this awful noise. I took a peek and still wasn't finding anything and then looked out my window and... 
Oh my goodness, what is that? Literally, what is that? I mean, we obviously had to fight him, right? Why is he so big? Where did he go? Where did he go? Oh, he's over there. I'm scared. I'm literally so scared. Why is he so big? I'm gonna fight him inside of my house so that I can run if I need to. Oh! Ah! Oh my gosh! Why do you keep on running away? Probably because you're so big. Oh my gosh! This- Oh, he's so strong! Okay- Oh! I have some- I have poison! Skeleton creeper! No! Okay, this is going really well! I'll just fight you in the water. Why are you so big? Literally, why are you so big? I need food. It's going to be fine. Don't worry. Here, I gotta take off my pants. I'm sorry, but I'm not letting them break. Okay, actually, maybe fighting him in the water was like the worst idea I could have. Why does he jump like that? I'm running. I'm going. Let's go. Oh, I don't know what that was. Why did that pop? I don't know. Let's get out of here. But like, you know, I really do want to fight him. Just a little bit. Just a wee bit. Where is he? Oh, he's down there. You dummy. I don't know if I'm hurting him. We got him. We can do this. Totally cheesing this fight. He literally has like what? 460 HP and I'm just totally cheesing it. But I hope I get a, like a really cool drop or something. Oh, I don't like when he does this poison thing. Again. We go again. And we run. And we run. Oof. Oof, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Okay, okay, it really hurts. Oh, he's out now. He's out now. Okay. Ah. Yeah, I'm definitely cheesing this so hard. <gasps> I got him! I did it! Did you drop something cool? You didn't really drop anything cool besides these bone pieces that I couldn't pick up. They just ended up despawning, honestly. Anyways, after that little adventure, it was time to go on another adventure to the promenade and continue looking for the elevator. It started thunderstorming, which caused these zombies riding zombie horses to spawn. I don't want to fight these. What do you mean? And so I fought them. The sound of these horses dying was actually awful and I only got an iron sword from it. And then this immortal drowned thing spawned. What is that? Literally, why are all these... Oh, immortal? Does that mean that he's immortal? That would make sense, right? Like, I can't kill him? Oh, but maybe I can? So clearly, he is taking damage. But where the immortal thing comes in is when it lightnings. He goes back up to full health. Oh gosh, how do I kill him then? And then I tried to fight him inside since lightning can't strike. And it actually worked. Okay, he's almost dead. And there he goes. Oh, he dropped a trident. That's so cool. I literally fought so many monsters that day, but of course I'm here to find the elevator. And on day 58, I finally found it. Oh my goodness, I found it. I found it. Okay, so this is the elevator. It took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to figure out how it worked, but I eventually figured it out. Oh, right click to activate. Okay, that seems easy enough. It brought me down into yet another dungeon thing that I explored for an entire day and part of the next day. Oh, it was more of the same, the same monsters, the same loot. I just kept on going through it, hoping to find that vine rune. You are very funny if you think that I'm going to parkour my way over these spikes. Absolutely not. There will be no parkouring today. After a while, I did get pretty bored. It was just so, so repetitive. Nothing got harder. The rooms were all the same and there were just so many of them. But finally, I made my way through the dungeon and found the vine rune. I think this is the last room in this part of the dungeon. And there is a bad guy here. Is he going to be hard? Oh, it's just a runner. Okay, maybe not that hard. No, we're good. 
And there we go. We finally have the vine rune. Also, lots of gold. Don't mind if I do. A little bit of diamond. That's super neat. Ooh, and look at all this emerald over here. I didn't even notice. So now it says that once you found a vine rune, head back to the prison and find a runic vine to use the rune on, which will open the door to the crypt. So I guess kind of like this, which I don't know why there's one here, but it tells me to head back to the prison. So that's what I'm going to do. And so I headed back to the prison and located the runic vine. Okay, here we go. We just do this. Oh. And we go up this little beanstalk. Ooh, insufferable crypt. Am I ready for this? I don't know, but I guess we're going on in. Ooh, even the rats avoid this place. Reach the insufferable crypt. Just a little bit spooked, just a wee bit. I have no idea what to expect. Oh, it just opened by itself. Enter the insufferable crypt, which I did do that so we get ancient sewage bucket which sounds disgusting why do i need that and then we had to defeat the boss oh my gosh and then we're done with this to deal damage to this boss you must first kill the tentacles can drop the cursed sword which gives you the cursed effect when held don't use the sword in hardcore. Does that mean that we're going to die if we use the sword? So should we not use the sword? I'm so scared. Oh my goodness, look at it. This is, ah, ah. Oh, are those the tentacles, just the little baby ones? This boss fight was so incredibly tedious. So in the beginning, I was really caught up on the whole tentacle thing because of the quest book literally says in order to deal damage, you have to kill the tentacles. But whether I shot the tentacles or just the boss himself, he was still taking the same amount of damage. Honestly, I never figured out what the quest book meant by that. And then I decided to climb up on these platform things to be able to get closer to him and deal damage. Image. But there were two problems with this technique. One, it was a lot harder for me to avoid his attacks being in such a small space. And it also took too long to get up and down for it to really be effective. And two, my armor was taking a beating. Mending was great whenever I was actively fighting mobs that gave me experience, but for fighting one boss, a breaking three would have been better. Honestly, watching the footage back, I do think that I could have made this work if I didn't have to be so careful of not breaking my armor. I really didn't want anything to break. Then he did this invincible thing where I couldn't hit him at all. During this phase, I had to go on the ground to attack the tentacles that would come up. Then his eye would turn green, which would mean that he was about to shoot things at you. It took me a little bit of time to figure out all of his attack patterns, but once I did, it got pretty easy from there. Though it still took me so, so, so long. Like a full 45 minutes of fighting him, an absolute crime. Maybe I was doing something wrong and there was actually an easier way to fight him, but I'm just a girl, so what can I say? Also, I did break my helmet. And then I put on this relic thing that I found back at the elevator place, and I actually really liked it. It gave me speed. Anyways, I did eventually defeat him, of course. Oh my gosh, it's so close to dying. I literally cannot wait. This has been taking so long. So basically what happens is we have this little shooty thing, and I just run back and forth to avoid the little shots. And then I wait until his eye turns yellow, he does the spikes, he comes forward, I get as many hits as I can in, usually just two to three, and then basically repeat, sometimes he'll go directly into the shooty, and then sometimes he'll do another spiky. But every time after the shooty, he does the spiky, and then I get the hits in, and he's literally, like, we have a pixel, a pixel of health. And this should be the very last hit that we have to do, right? Oh my gosh, he literally has zero pixels left come on 
Come on. All right, last time. Last time for real. For real, for real. We got it. Oh my gosh, no, he has 27 health left out of like, what, 3,000 or something ridiculous? Last time for real, for real. For real, for real. Oh my gosh, we finally did it. Oh my gosh, that was the most annoying boss fight I've ever had to partake in. So we got ourselves a tentacle. Swing the tentacle, pulling yourself towards its target. And then we also have this cursed sword. One hit and you're dead. Oh my gosh, okay. So it does 47 attack damage, but if we get hit, we die. That is a little bit scary. And here we go to the overworld. Oh my gosh, I don't think I like that very much, honestly. Oh my goodness, I just realized that I am on level 153. I've never been on this high of a level ever before. And I mean, it was definitely well-earned because that took me so long to fight that boss. But thank goodness he gave me so many levels oh my gosh so many levels so i guess that's one good thing to come from this fight i probably will never use the drops but those levels will come in handy oh yeah and then i do get this prismarine bricks forge controller i have literally no idea what that means but i have it i did some research to try to figure out what this thing does and i still have not the slightest idea i tried to build a forge thing after doing some research online and that didn't work i'm thinking maybe i needed prismarine and i definitely did not have that but after all of that, I was still wanting to adventure more for some reason. So I went back to the Souls Like mod to research and saw that if I crafted a Moonstone Compass, I could locate the old champion's graves, where then I could fight another boss. So after researching, I did some leveling up, repaired my bow, and went to sleep. Bright and early the next morning, I set off to find the old champion's graves. be in a snowy place i really really hate the cold in this mod pack oh i found it old champion's remains but upon arriving i rested up for the battle ahead and woke up on day 64 ready to cheese the fight oh my goodness is that the boss can i just like fight him from up here just like completely cheese it Oh, and I have no idea what's coming to me. At first, he was taking a lot of damage, but after a while, his health started to deplete a lot slower and then stopped depleting altogether. Maybe he had some kind of status effect thing or something. And that's when I started to freeze. So I made out to craft a campfire, thinking that standing beside of it would help warm me up. What do you mean the fire isn't helping me? What do you mean I'm cold? And I would think that the fire would warm me up, but it doesn't seem to be working. I will literally stand in the fire. Hello, please warm me up. Will the furnace warm me up? Okay, cool. This... This is cool. So with no way of getting warm, I was forced to head to a warmer biome. I did this at night and it was absolute chaos. You also run slower when you're cold, so I'm sure you can imagine how this went. Okay, there's a skeleton. Things are going well. There's ice zombies. Freezing to death. I am freezing to death. <gasps> Baby zombie? What do you- Ah! This is not going well. This is not going well. This is not going well. Oh my gosh. Go fast. Go fast. Okay, we're in warmth. We're in warmth. We got it. I'm gonna be okay. Literally, I don't- I- I don't need to deal with this right now. Leave me alone. Die. Die. No. Just die. <gasps> is it nighttime? What is happening? Why is a thunderstorm happening right now? What do you mean? Oh my gosh. That was a nightmare. <laughs> and then I spent the entirety of day 65 trying to find the remains again. The compass was literally taking me in the wrong direction. Maybe since I had already discovered the one place I was at before, it was trying to take me to another one. 
Honestly, I'm not sure, but it was very annoying. The next day though, I did find it and started to fight the champion again. And I killed him so fast, which leads me to believe that he just had some kind of status effect thing. But please enjoy some more chaos. What? Oh, I was not expecting that. I was definitely not expecting that. That's for sure. Oh my gosh, what do you mean? Did I get one shot by it? Why is it so strong? What do you mean? Why was that so strong? To say the least, that caught me off guard. And also, who doesn't set their spawn close to a boss fight? Me, apparently. I wasn't going to make that mistake again, so I brought my bed with me this time. There was no way I wasn't going to defeat this boss, but first I had to get my stuff back. So I would like, why does he hurt so bad? <gasps> ah, oh my gosh, literally, why does he hurt so bad? I don't understand. Where even is he? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I literally don't even know. No, leave me alone. This is not going to end well. No. Ah. Oh, is this my first stuff? <gasps> I got everything. Yay. I want to go down here and see if it's easier to fight him down here. Why do I think that would be the case? I have no idea, but I want to give it a go. I thought it'd be easier to fight him in more of a contained area. But I did want easy access to my bed so that whenever I inevitably die again, I can quickly go back inside. So I built a tunnel leading to my bed. Next to bring him into the hole with me. Shade, where are you? Oh, he's coming. Run! Okay, I want to find him in the hole. I was dealing a fair amount of damage, but so was he, particularly to my shield. And once that broke, it was game over. Hello, can I get my stuff? Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, we did it. Oh my goodness, we did it. We cheesed it just a little bit, but we did it. Oh my goodness, look at all the cool stuff I got. Essence of Eventide. Hold control for lore. You feel a strong sense of longing as if it desperately wants to return to something. And then Lord Soul, the last will of the old champion resides in this soul. Put me back, let me protect my people. This was so cool. Defeat the old champion and the creature that has possessed its remains. Acquired a Lord Soul, the remnants of their existence. That's a weird way to spell existence. My goodness, was that tough? That was so strong. Oh my gosh, 25 levels well deserved. Defeat the frenzied shade. Spawns after you have successfully defeated the old champion's remains. We only got five levels for that. But now we can defeat the fallen icon, summoned by clicking on an old moon altar with an essence of eventide, which we do have the essence of eventide, so we could do that, but I'm probably going to guess that that is going to be incredibly difficult. Also, do you notice how the shade sounds were still happening after I defeated him? But I'm sure it's fine. Let's not worry about that. What is that noise? <gasps> what do you mean? Why? Ah! Let me just set my spawn real fast, okay? Why are there more? What do you mean? Why are there more? I thought I was done. I don't even have my sword out. I thought I was done. Are they just like, what is happening? I thought I was done with this. Oh my gosh, what was that for? That was a nice surprise, wasn't it? And I still had the wither effect this whole time, though it wasn't hurting me. And as soon as I exited the game and then came back, it went away. But once I was back home, I just spent the rest of the day clearing out my inventory, leveling up and replenishing my food and water. I feel like I've done lots of adventuring within the 68 days, but there was one last thing that I wanted to complete before I would be completely satisfied with my progress in these 100 days. I wanted to defeat the returning knight, 
which is the boss in the right path of the souls like mod but first some preparing of course in this mod pack you do get hot in the nether so there's an ice pack that you can craft to cool yourself off but to craft this ice pack i need ice and to get ice i need silk touch and to get silk touch I need lapis, which I actually didn't have. So it's off to the caves for me. Oh yeah, and I did put fortune two on my pickaxe. So that was very helpful when mining lapis. Oh my gosh, there's a firefly on the skeleton's head. That's so cute. Oh, I killed it. I'm so sorry, firefly. <gasps> Benny, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. I thought that you were something scary. After getting what I needed from the caves, I went home crafted a new diamond pickaxe and enchanted it with silk touch. Now to get the ice. I headed over to Harriet's house to collect some and then traded for a couple more mending books. Back at home, I was now able to craft an ice pack. In order to use it, you have to continuously load it with ice and then hold it in your hand. Lastly, I added mending to my diamond helmet and new silk touch pickaxe. With my shiny new ice pack, it was finally time to jump into the nether. I ended up re-restoring that abandoned nether portal from earlier so that I could spawn in my original location that's safely right beside of the nether fortress. And honestly, thank goodness I spawned right beside one because can can you imagine me traversing to the nether to find one? No, thank you. The whole time I was in the fortress, I was so tense and nervous. I hate going to vanilla fortresses and this one is modded, which is even worse. Even the regular skeletons were ridiculously strong. Oh my gosh, why is that skeleton so tough? Also, I really don't think the ice pack was working that well because I was still overheating. Sometimes I would start to cool off, but I think it was just because I wasn't currently beside of lava or fire, not because of the ice pack. I had a couple of close calls. Ah. And then I saw this red outline thing that brought me to my second close call. All right, now is this a terrible idea? Probably, but I'm just a little bit curious. Like, what are you? Can we cheese it like we always do? Invading forlorn. He's actually not tough. He just has glowing for some reason. What is that? I don't think it's mean. Burned. What are you? Oh, but he is pretty tough. <gasps> oh, I didn't mean to hit the hellhound. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. I love you. I think you're very cute. I did not mean to hurt you. Are you still mad at me? I really did not mean to. I promise. Oh, I'm really sorry. I don't want to have to kill you, but I will if I if you leave me no other choice. Oh my gosh, she's literally gonna kill me. No, please don't. Please don't. Sorry. Anyways, I finally found myself inside of the fortress and was able to get some nether wart and four blaze rods. I say that as if it didn't take me like two days to collect or something, but it's fine. With the nether tasks out of the way, I could finally brew some potions. And sure, I could have plopped a brewing stand down and went on my way, but I did want to put a little bit of thought into it. And while I was already doing some decorating, I decided to do some more decorating around the house, starting with the kitchen. So I placed some counters down, which already makes this place feel like a proper kitchen. And then crafted some curtains. And I'm sorry, but look how cute these are. I feel like I'm not in a scary medieval world full of things trying to kill me with these on my windows. I added a rug and a daisy and I love, love how this kitchen turned out. I'm sorry, but look how cute my kitchen is. It's so adorable. Look at the curtains and the flower and the rug and the little brewing setup. I love it so much. Then I went upstairs to add a railing around the stairs, another little rug, 
and then of course some more curtains. Now finally, potion time. I just wanted to brew a couple of potions to make my life a little easier when it came time to fighting the boss. First, I went with a strength potion and then got a little lost looking through the insane amount of potions that are in this mod pack. I did have to go back to the place I thought I'd never go the nether but i just went for a quick trip to get some glowstone and then i spent even more time looking through all of the potion options where i found a potion of healing boost brewed using a sweet berry so i decided to craft some of these while waiting for those to brew i crafted the old moon altar which i needed to summon the returning knight also remember me saying that i could power up this great sword a while back well, now that I have a lost soul that I got from the Frenzied Shade, I was able to do that. So I placed my sword in a smithing table with the soul and had myself a pretty powerful sword. I wanted to test it out on some monsters, so I went outside to do so, and it was honestly pretty cool. It shoots these beams out at your target, so it doubles as a ranged weapon. I spent all of day 76 making final preparations, like brewing lots of strength and healing boost potions, cooking up some food, leveling up, and crafting shields. On day 77, I was as prepared as I could be in that moment to fight the boss, so I set out to find a good location to summon him. I feel like I should go somewhere open to fight this boss, so I'm thinking right over here, which if I'm not mistaken, I think that's that really pretty meadow that we went to earlier. And obviously that seems like the perfect place to fight a boss. And just a quick boat ride away, I had arrived at my destination nation and here we are in that meadow it is fall time so it is a little bit more dead looking but i think that i am ready to go ahead and set down this altar maybe let's do it right here so let's go ahead and drink this potion of strength and then this potion of healing boost i'm not exactly sure how that works but i assume that it's going to boost my healing and then we just use this lost soul on the altar and here he comes and he is very big oh my gosh look how big he is um i don't really know what to expect oh okay so it seems like he just spawns things and then i had to like fight those things but he himself does not hurt me is that how that works i don't know okay i'm gonna have to be a little bit more speedy this was such a learning process for me there was so much i didn't know going into the fight watching this back and watching me get close to him when i clearly shouldn't be makes me cringe i get a few hits in on him oh oh so what happens is when he does this smashing thing mobs spawn and in particular these wizard guys spawn that heal him so it is imperative that you get those guys first or all of your progress dealing damage to him will be for nothing also look how much damage these attacks do to my armor it's the stupid tentacle guy all over again i was starting to feel very discouraged about this fight you know i am not sure if i'm ready for this fight ah he's so strong Oh my goodness! Hello, can I get myself, please? And one time I did get fairly close to beating him. Using a shield really helped, who would have thought? Until I accidentally used my bow instead of my shield. <gasps> no! I was so, I was doing so good. I was doing so, so good. An issue that I was having was that my fancy great sword was two handed. AKA, I couldn't use my shield if I had it in my hand, so I had to quickly switch to something one-handed, but that would take too long sometimes or I would accidentally switch to my bow or something dumb. I kept on and kept on trying, but my armor just couldn't handle it. If he wasn't one-shotting me before, he definitely was now with next to no armor. I don't think I'm ready for this. The next day, I ran away to regroup, take a breather, and rethink my whole life. 
I had no armor, no more potions. Success was looking slim. I was even thinking about just giving up and not fighting him at all. So I perused the quest book, trying to think of something else that I could do with my 100 days when a zombie came out of nowhere and broke my chest plate. And better yet, I wasn't even recording. Then my partner came home from work and we fought the boss together a couple of times with no success, of course, but they assured me that I was capable of defeating the boss. So I spent the rest of the day trying, but once my shield broke, I knew it was over. but I was still determined to defeat him. I knew I could do it. So I headed back home to brew a lot more potions. And this time I decided to brew some potions of swiftness that I think definitely came in handy. I crafted more armor and even some backup armor crafted some golden apples, and a bunch of shields. No, I didn't have my fancy diamond armor anymore, but I was going to do the best I could with what I had. And now it was time to head back over to the boss site and try again. Once I was there, I drank my potions and then ran into battle and died immediately. At first, my strategy was to have my baby sword in my hand while fighting everything that wasn't the boss. And then when it came time to get some hits in, I would switch to my big sword and that just didn't Ugh. work. It wasn't until I decided once and for all to stick with my baby sword that I beat him. <gasps> oh my gosh, I did it. I did it. Oh my goodness, that was clean too. That was a good run. Watching that back, it literally looks so easy. Like, what do you mean it took me like 30 tries? All I had to do was switch over to my baby sword and my baby sword worked so much better than the giant sword. Only just a few deaths to get there, just a couple. I better get something good from the quest book for fighting him. Oh, I get 25 levels. I did get this massive weapon as a drop, which is pretty cool, but look how goofy I look holding it. I think I'll stick to my baby sword for now. After the fight, I was ready to retire and live out the rest of my days in my cozy little base, living a cozy little life. So I cleared out my inventory and headed over to my cobblestone gathering area to, you guessed it, gather cobblestone. Like I said, I wanted to cozy up a home for the remaining days in this world. So I really just wanted to make my base as cute as I could. First up, I wanted to build a barn. There's nothing wrong with cows hanging out in the cow pen, but they do get pretty annoying when I'm inside of my house. They're just so loud. The morning after cobblestone gathering, two creepers decided to try and ruin my new peaceful life. Ah! No. But no one can ruin my peace except winter winter can ruin my peace. So as I continued gathering materials for my barn and woke up on day 85, winter had arrived. It's winter. I have a few things to say about this awful season. At first, I was really excited about it because you can actually craft little festive lights and snowmen and so many other festive things, but I'll get to all of that in a minute. For now, let's focus on the barn. I continued gathering wood and then cleared out an area for the barn to go. I decided to build it right beside of the sheep pen, then it got to mapping out the shape. I did wing it a little bit, but a barn is a barn, so I just followed the style that I usually go for. I also wanted this barn to have storage inside of it because my storage room in my house was pretty tight. But please enjoy these clips of me building the barn while I rant about winter in this mod pack. So obviously there is a temperature system in the mod pack. So if it is cold, then you get cold. And winter is cold, so you're literally always cold. Though I did notice that it gets worse when it snows. If there isn't snow on the ground, it's at least bearable. Anyways, we've already seen that standing by a fire or a furnace doesn't warm you up, which I think is dumb, but there are also items within the mod that you can use to warm yourself up. So to stay warm, you can craft hot stones that you had to continuously heat up in the furnace. 
kind of like the ice pack that you had to keep on filling up. You can also insulate your armor with fur to keep yourself warm. I did both of these things, which you'll see soon, and it literally did not help. Whenever I do things to keep warm, I want the freezing effect to go away completely. Not slow down the freezing process, but I don't want to have to worry about it at all. It's quite literally the most annoying thing about this mod pack. I understand that it's supposed to be realistic or whatever, but I, I don't care. Anyways, on day 89, I started the day off with crafting a new diamond chest plate and then insulated it with polar bear fur. I got the polar bear fur from completing a quest in the environment mod, by the way, in case you were wondering. And as I've established before, it really didn't help. Then I filled the storage side of my barn with chests and added some hanging lanterns. I had a little visit from the wandering trader. Hmm, wandering trader in a tree with hanging donkeys. Oh no, are you okay? I don't think they are. And finally started to carve out a pathway and add some windows complete with little flower boxes to the barn. The next day it was time to move the cows. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to break the fence. But now there is an empty animal pen, so what better way to fill it than add our giant gecko? It was a tight squeeze, but he did fit. By this point, he's also earned the privilege of being named, so I decided on the name Gerald. Don't you think that he's just such a Gerald? Pretty much at this point, I was just trying to squeeze in as much fun little modded things as possible without fighting bosses. So the next thing I did was craft these fun festive lights to decorate the house and barn. I may hate winter in this mod pack, but might as well make the most of it. And lastly, I've always wanted to make the forest area surrounding my base a little safer. So I placed a bunch of lanterns around and in this mod pack, the lanterns will hang by themselves on the side of a block, so I think they look really cute. I continued with the lantern hanging the next morning, and look how slow I walk when I'm cold. I literally can't go any faster than that. I tidied up my barn building mess, and then got started with collecting materials for a waystone display. At this moment, my waystone was just on the ground, but I wanted it to have a little bit more pizzazz. I started with a stone brick base, and then got a little distracted looking at the miscellaneous quests and saw that because I crafted those giant doors that I put on the barn, I got a welcome mat as an award. And just look how cute this is. My home looks so cozy and inviting. Then I got back to building the waste on display and saw this moth fly into the fire. <gasps> oh! Rip? But back to the display, I built a roof with a deep slate trim and filled that in with copper, then started to freeze to death. And that's when I made those hot stones I mentioned earlier. I would love to see that little freeze bar down there immediately start to go down, but it just happens so slow. So slow that I'm not even sure if it really works. And keep in mind, I'm also wearing insulated armor. But enough of that for now. The next day, I started to move more storage from my house to inside the barn. Why do all the cows crowd around exactly where I need to be? I had been staying up at night since I lit up my base a bit and also wanted to make the last remaining days count. That was until a crimson moon appeared and another creature started to spawn. What? What? Why is there a ghast out here? What is he doing out here? What do you mean? <gasps> <laughs> okay. 
So it says that a crimson moon has appeared and I assume that means that nether type mobs spawn at night. So we'll just, okay, well, we'll try to go to sleep. There we go. <gasps> Yeter starving alchemist lethargic wither skeleton. What does that even mean? <gasps> what is he throwing at me, buddy? That's mean. Also, that wither skeleton dropped a diamond axe, and I don't think I ever realized that. Oh my goodness, we got a wither skeleton skull. That's pretty neat. After that little fiasco, I spent the rest of the day and part of the next day moving over my storage. Riveting stuff. After that, I did some decorating around the base with some leaves and flowers. and even some of those blueberry bushes we found at the beginning. The last thing that I wanted to add to my base was a little dock so that I could fish on and have somewhere to permanently park my boat. But of course, winter has to come and ruin everything. <sighs> I rented for a while about it, I'm inside! I am literally inside. But I already did that, so I'll spare you. And then I stepped away from my PC for a minute because I knew that it took a while to warm up. And whenever I came back... Okay, wait. I literally went to the bathroom to wait until I warmed up because it takes a while. And I come back and I froze to death. Literally froze to death. What do you mean? What do you literally mean? Oh my gosh. I hate this so bad. I literally hate this mod so much. Why does it have to be in the game? Goodness gracious. I was holding the hot rocks. I know they went out, but like I was holding them. I'm wearing insulated armor. What do I, what am I supposed to do? I literally don't know. All I want to do is build a cute little base. And like, if I were adventuring, how would I survive? How would I literally survive out here if I can't just survive in my own base? I hate it here literally hate it here luckily we only have like five more days okay okay rant over after coming back to life i did some more decorating around the base by adding some lanterns and rope around the paths and these lattices around the wheat field I did some more exploring of the quest book and found that you can make a jar to put small entities inside of. So obviously the next step was to craft a jar and find a small entity. And what better thing than to put a firefly in the jar? <gasps> oh my goodness, look at it, it's a firefly in a jar. That's so cute. On day 97, I spent some time looking at all of these small miscellaneous things that you could craft and this aquarium piqued my interest. I was hoping that I would be able to put a fish inside of it, so I got a squid and then crafted a mushroom plushie while I waited for the glass to smelt. Nothing says retired like crafting cute little plushies or like having a pet fish. Though unfortunately, the squid wouldn't go in and I even got a salmon and tried that, but that didn't work either. I think the aquarium is just a workstation block for oceanographer villagers and not for functional purposes, unfortunately. I even tried putting water in it and that clearly didn't work. I guess the next best thing to having a pet fish was to fish for them and eat them. So I spent the rest of my day doing some cozy ice fishing. And since the 100 days are almost up at this point, I figured now would be the perfect time to share some thoughts about this mod pack. Overall, I really enjoyed it. There are so many cool new bosses and quests, and this mod pack really does try its best to immerse you into a medieval world. Whenever you enter a new game, there's even medieval-esque music playing, which is so neat. The echo when you walk in a cave, having to worry about clean drinking water, and the fun combat system are just a few small things that really make this mod pack come to life. Honestly, my only complaint is the dumb temperature system. 
I could do without that. And also, I still feel like I have so much more content to explore. 100 days isn't nearly enough, but I'm really happy with all of the progress that I have made. On day 99, I decided that there was no way that I was going to end the 100 days with beaten up armor. Though honestly, I think that does fit the vibe of the video a little bit more. I went through so many battles and quests and fought my way through this scary medieval world. And it just doesn't feel like shiny new armor fits, you know? But that's neither here nor there. I still crafted a full set of diamond armor and enchanted it. There are so many weird enchants in this mod pack. I spent forever looking through them and re-rolling. But the first time I enchanted my chest plate, I got Reckless 3 which reduces your health by 60%, but gives you the strength effect. No thank you. <laughs> okay, that's the worst enchantment ever. What do you mean? I don't want that enchantment. Oh yeah, and then I lost my diamond chest plate. Like it literally just disappeared. I'm sorry, but where did my diamond chest plate just go? Literally, where is it? It's not in here. It's not here. Where did it go? And then it just reappeared. Okay, uh, there it is. I literally don't know what happened, honestly. <laughs> Anyways, the enchants I finally got were Bag of Souls 2 and Cowardice 2 on my leggings. Good ol' Unbreaking 3 on the helmet. Protection 3, Snowball, and Fire Focus on the chest plate. And finally, Guarding Strike 2 on the boots. I also put Feather Falling 4 on the boots and Aqua Affinity on my helmet via Enchanted Book. Don't mind the fact that I'm literally always freezing, but it is now day 100. We have officially made it 100 days in medieval Minecraft stupid blueberry bush. I just need to go get some lava over here so that I can heat up my heating stones because I'm literally always cold. And I literally get warmer outside. Why is that? That literally makes no sense to me. But I did just enchant my armor with some really cool enchants. So I kind of want to kill some things just to see how it works. Now, what things should I kill, may you ask? And I'm not really sure, but I'm sure we can find something. I mean, this is medieval Minecraft. We have a skeleton. Okay, let's go. I don't think anything happened, but that was cool. What about down here? We have this undead miner. And an abandoned mine shaft. I definitely did not bring any torches because, you know, I didn't plan on going down here in the mines. But here we are. Ooh, zombie. I mean, honestly, our sword just kind of like two shots everything, which I'm definitely not complaining about. All right, well, that was fun. Let's get out of here. Well, armor works well, and I can't believe we literally just wasted half of our 100th day literally doing nothing at all. Just going down in a cave and killing a couple of zombies and skeletons, but it's fine. Anyways, now that we're home, I did want to do a little tour. So we have our dock that I just built, of course, and then this little waystone stand so that we can teleport to good old Harriet's home. Of course, we have our barn with a cute little fairy line and all of the cows are so annoying they always try to get in front of my chests while i'm trying to access them but we do have some storage here and then a little upstairs section that i didn't really do anything with actually but now we have a place for the cows and they just won't be in this little fence by our house because they do get really annoying whenever i'm inside the house but i guess now they are also really annoying whenever i'm accessing my storage so i didn't really fix anything there but it's fine this little fire i have used so much to purify every single drop of water i drank pretty much in the world and this is one of the very first things that i built other than our house though it was originally over here but now we have a sheep pen so that i am able to get plenty of wool from them and i think it's nice and cute and cozy in here with our little wither skeleton skull and of course we have our house which i really love how it turned out it's very medieval-esque and we have gerald over here taking a little nap we have our little wheat field a well over there our potato field and it looks like it is now nighttime 
ready to go to bed and we have officially finished our 100th day of medieval minecraft and i'm really going to miss this world this has been so much fun definitely very very difficult for sure but so so much fun i have enjoyed every single maybe not every single day but i've enjoyed most days of this 100 day challenge so we'll go ahead and go to bed for the very last time